Hi, Misha here. And without any forewarning or forenotice, this came in today. <laughs> Typically, Eagle Moss sends an email letting you know something shipped, usually a couple of days before it's actually in the post, and you know they're just printing labels. But I got nothing. And it was actually a big box with a couple of different things. And I was just saying when I did the video on the USS Nog, the Eisenberg class, 20, uh, 32nd century, that I really was interested to see the Voyager J of the uh, 32nd century Intrepid class. And uh, yeah, it was quite a nice surprise today to just come in. So, quick little video. I do plan on doing an actual fleet video of the 32nd century ships once the fourth one comes in. We'll go from that. We don't really know much about this, as most of these ships. It's about 453 meters long, so quite small, all things considered. The Galaxy, again, was just shy of 650. The Sovereign was 700. But it is larger than the original Voyager, the Intrepid, which was a little over 300, so about 50% larger. Yeah, that works. We don't uh, know anything about it aside from it has programmable matter and that it has detached nacelles. And interestingly, it also has a detached star drive, which at first struck me as very silly. But actually, the way they did it, it's okay. And when you consider that everyone in Discovery Season 3 and 4 has personal transporters in their comm badge, okay, whatever. But you would think having a detached star drive with the warp in there, that might have saved these from getting blowed up in the burn. But nope, we see three or four exploding in the year 3069. But it was obviously a mass-produced class because we see at least four of these, including the Voyager J, being used in the various episodes in Discovery, including the fleet and evacuation of Earth and all that stuff. And Voyager J seems to be kind of the de facto flagship of the fleet. At least that's the impression we're given by Admiral Vance, because it's called upon a lot. And it seems to be quite a capable ship. As for the Eagle Moss model, I can tell you straight out, I already like the way they did the nacelles on these over the Eisenberg better. They're pretty easy to figure out which way they go. And it clips on to the rear of the saucer, like on the smaller Voyager models. Now the star drive and saucer don't separate. They're just held together with a little bit of clear plexiglass type stuff. But that's okay. And it sits on its stand quite well, but what I really like about this over the Eisenberg is you can pick it up as a unit with the nacelles on here. The clips are more present on the bottom than the top. And you know, just the laws of physics. See, my idea is they could use some weird complicated magnet arrangement to make them float there. But no, of course not. There, It's a model. You gotta do what you gotta do. I think everyone knew the whole detached nacelle thing would be interesting to see how Eagle Moss did it. And it's hard to think of a better way where it would still be durable. But I like that it's all here a piece. The saucer is a big metal chunk, kind of an arrowhead. And then it blends into this detached star drive. It's not detached by a whole lot, not as much as I thought it would be. And this is plastic down here with the nacelles. And then we have this kind of cut out in the back. Not sure what that's supposed to do, but I don't know, a field of some kind, I'm sure.
But first impressions, this does seem like a future Federation ship. Sleek and angular, kind of the direction they were going at the end of the 24th, beginning of the 25th century. A very recessed deflector dish. I like it much more than the Sovereign's, I'm not Sovereign, the uh, oh, Inquiry classes, you know, car grill. It's much more that. And it's definitely recognizable as a Voyager. <laughs> also seems like they finally got away from the big bridge that's bubbled out. Because they finally learned that lesson. But it seems like a good medium cruiser for the fleet. I am um, pretty impressed. It's also a good size. Not only is it pretty long, it's very wide too. But their way of doing the floating bits is quite nice. And again, I, I like how it goes on the stand. It's very secure. And it's not going to put the weight on something that maybe would warp. Actually fits quite tight. But, oops, see, I was, I was, that was intentional. I was testing to see how well it stood on the stand. Also, it shows you that the nacelles hang on quite well, too. So, what do you think? Like I said, did the nog, now this one, yeah, which one do you like more? And when the next one comes in, we'll continue this up. If you could, please like, share, and subscribe. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.